In this video here I'll be installing dual boot on the X98 Air3G. First off I'm going to install the BIOS in Windows. Need to download the BIOS files of course, you can get them from xda or techtablets.com and extract the files to your desktop and execute the Chinese bat file which will start to flash the BIOS. Before you do this make sure you have at least 50% battery or you could risk a brick so be really careful there. So it's flashing now the BIOS on my A3G. And once that is finished I will proceed to shut the machine down. Next up, how to flash it in Android. And here's how you update the BIOS in Android. So you need to move the BIOS files over onto the internal storage, launch the update IEFWI, find the BIOS file off the internal storage, Here you can see I've got the dual boot bias right here. If you click to flash that, it will take about two to three minutes to flash. Okay, now how to install the Intel manufacturing tools. Download the file from the link below in the video description. Once you extract it, proceed to install the drivers one after another. I actually already have these drivers installed, but for the purposes of this video, I will just quickly show you the process of installing them. You can see I've already got it installed. Okay, now let's install the manufacturing flash tool. Again, I already have this installed, but for the purposes of this video. So once you have that installed, there's one important step we need to take. And this is we need to copy the custom config file from the download of the manufacturing tools. We need to move that over and into the folder on the C drive where we installed the manufacturing flash tool. This step's really important and a lot of people forget it. So if you have problems flashing, maybe you forgot to do this. Hopefully not. Okay, now let's run the manufacturing flash tool. And we'll just go into file and settings here. And make sure you enter these values. This is for the X98 Air 3G. It seems to work on the on all the models, so make sure you enter these values here. That's important. Other devices it might be different, but this is for the Air 3G. Okay, now let's go and select a ROM that we want to install. You can download various ROMs from XDA from techtablets.com. I have a few here, but you need to choose a ROM that's going to match. Uh, the model of your tablet you have. So you need to check the device ID on the back of the tablet and install the correct one. I'm just going to actually change the partition tables 
on my ROM here because I want more space for Windows 8.1 and less space for Android. So you can select the partition table here you want. So if you want more data for Android, it's possible to do that or more space for Windows. So here I'm only choosing the three gigabyte data install from the partition table and the ROM. Now the download for the partition tables is in the link in the video. There is a link for it and I have just copied and pasted that over now. And I'll proceed now to actually flash the ROM. So here I just need to load up the ROM again, ready to flash it. And select the flash XML. So it's all ready now. Now we need to get the tablet ready and in fast boot mode. Okay, so my tablet is powered off. Need to power it on, holding down the volume, up and down buttons at the same time as powering it on. Logo should show up and then it will come up with a message saying DNX mode, waiting for fast boot command. And you, now you're ready to flash. So we can connect up the USB cable. And now on our PC, we should finally start to see that the device is flashing. Here we can see it's starting to now flash my Air 3G. It will take a while, I've shortened this video clip just a little bit. It will take a few minutes to flash. Whatever you do, do not power off your PC, do not remove the USB cable because you will brick your device. You do not want to touch any of that. It's crucial. So I will skip ahead because this is taking a little while. So we can see in this video, my tablet there is just finishing up now. And once it's done, it will reboot into Android. And the first boot into Android will take some time. So just be patient. Now we're going to create a flash drive that we can boot and install Windows with. I use ISO to disk here to create the, the flash drive needed. You can see here I've got an image of Windows 8.1. You can use Windows 10. And I've also downloaded the 3G drivers. So they're the window drivers for the 3G. I have them already on my desktop. So to create the, the image we need, sorry, the flash drive, we need to make sure it's a GPT. And we can select the Windows image that we're going to burn onto a USB flash drive. And you can burn that and the speed depends on the speed of your flash drive once it's finished. And an important step here is to move the drivers over onto that flash drive so when you boot into Windows later on, once you install it, you have the drivers on the flash drive. Okay, so I have my hub here, the tablets and Android. And I'm just going to connect up my USB mouse and keyboard. And of course, my flash drive that has Windows 8.1 on it and the Air 3G drivers are on that as well. So I will just connect them up and then power off 
the tablet because we need to now boot it into Windows where it will start to read the flash drive and we can proceed with the Windows installation. So powered off and then powered on holding up the volume up button to give you the dual boot menu. Select the Windows icon and it should start to read your USB flash drive that you created earlier and you can start to install Windows. So here you can see Windows is booting up to install on the tablet. Standard Windows install here. The text is really tiny due to the high resolution screen. Once that's finally set up, we need to select a custom Windows install. And then we need to find the unallocated partition. This is the empty space here that we can install Windows 8.1 onto. So I proceed to install Windows on that empty space. That takes a while, so I've just skipped ahead. Finally, we're into Windows here. After the install, it took a while, it took about 10 minutes. Of course, the touch screen isn't working because we don't have any drivers installed. So we need that mouse, which should be connected up to your hub. And you should have the USB flash drive connected to your hub as well. So we can extract the drivers that we moved over. Extract the drivers it will take some time. I have just skipped ahead in the video save you having to watch all of that because it's very slow. Okay, now's the painful part. In Windows, we need to install the drivers. So you install the drivers first and not the GCN, so that comes later on. So we need to go into the drivers and install them one by one. This is time consuming, takes a little while. You need to right click on the install file and go through and install each one of the, the drivers for Windows. I will just install a few here for you and we'll skip ahead in the video and cut this out because it is time consuming. So once you have installed all of those drivers, but not the Intel graphics driver, we need to install that one from the device manager, which I'm going to do here. So we go into the device manager through the control panel and we need to find the display adapters and click on the Microsoft basic display adapter and um, we need to update the driver software. And here we need just to browse through and find the Intel graphics driver. 
and install it. So you click on have disk and find the location of your drivers and the Intel driver. And you'll see it here, IGDLH, that's the one we want. It's the Intel graphics driver. Now this will take some time to install, so we will. So let's move on and install the orientation sensor while that's installing. So go back to the drivers that we extracted before, G sensor folder, and run the KX Excel 1.8. run that as an administrator and proceed to install the orientation sensors, gravity sensors. The screen was just flashing there, that's just the Intel driver finishing. Okay, so that's finished. There's still one more thing to do. We need to fix the Android partitions from showing up in Windows. Ah, but before we do that, we need to install the G sensor registry file. This will correct the inverted sensor when rotating the screen. Orientation center will fix that. So install that. Now we'll fix those partitions that are showing up. You can see all these partitions, all these drives that are showing up. Whatever you do, don't format them. Or else Android will not work. It will just won't boot. You'll kill it. So we need to go into the control panel, into the administrative tools. Go to computer management. And then go to disk management. You can see all these raw file systems. Those are all the Android partitions that we need to basically remove the drive letter to stop them from showing up in Windows. So right click them and go to change drive letter and paths and just click remove to remove the drive letter. That will stop it from showing up in Windows and help clean things up. You don't want to have all those drives just listed there. It's not a good look. Okay, so we're done. That's the drivers done, the sensors installed, everything. We can now finally restart the system after installing all the drivers so we can reboot. And if you did everything right, it should boot up just like this here. This is me booting the system up straight after installing all the drivers. You can see touch works correctly. And the orientation sensors working correctly. You're done. You have installed dual boot. Well done. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.